Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light's boycott six months later has resulted in massive layoffs, the stock price is down, and the shelf space is gone. You're going to be seeing a lot less Bud Light on your store shelves. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Newsweek, how Bud Light sales are faring six months since the devastating boycott. This is an interesting article. I like how they covered the subject. We're also going to add some detail because, of course, we're really familiar with this subject and we've been covering it for a while. Bud Light sales are still struggling nearly six months after transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney first posted a video on Instagram on April 1st, 2023 featuring a personalized beer can from Bud Light that sparked a massive boycott. We know also now that the Bud Light people at Anheuser-Busch absolutely were aware of the promotion and signed off on the beer can. So while they didn't own up to it months ago, it's been discovered because people who were laid off from Bud Light were featured in an extensive article from The Guardian that exposed, yes, the company was aware of the promotion. They were all for it. In fact, they were trying to plant seeds of inclusion by doing the promotion. No more mystery. On April 1st, Mulvaney shared a video of Mulvaney drinking from a Bud Light can and showed the one with Mulvaney's face on it that had been sent to celebrate Mulvaney's day 365 of girlhood as part of a promotion with the company. The move enraged right-wing activists, normal people, and people who didn't understand what Bud Light was trying to accomplish by bringing Mulvaney and a beer can with Mulvaney's face on it to a classic brand that had nothing to do with Mulvaney's movement. Conservatives shared footage on social media of them destroying Bud Light products using an array of dramatic means, including running crates of Bud Light over with a tractor, which was very funny, and shooting at them with an artillery gun. Thank you, Kid Rock. The most recent data from Bernstein in the week ending September 9th saw Bud Light with an 8.9% market share of the beer market. This was down from 12% immediately before the boycott began. In the four weeks to September 9th, Bud Light sales declined by around 30% in both volume and dollar value compared with the period a year ago. Which means truly, if they're down 30% by revenue, they're down a lot more than 30% by volume. It's got to be at least 33% by volume because they were able to pass along a price increase that the market accepted. They're just not accepting the product. The statistics were compiled by Bump Williams Consulting. Speaking to Fox News Digital, Harry Schumacher, the beer business daily publisher, trade industry publication, said that the latest figures show that the decline in Bud Light sales has become quasi-permanent. Basically meaning... The market share is lost permanently. The people that have decided they do not want to be associated with Dylan Mulvaney and all of that relationship that that implies, the idea of Dylan Mulvaney jumping into a bathtub, people just don't want to be associated with that in any way. Those people are not coming back to the brand. Nielsen data released in August showed that Bud Light sales fell by 26.5% for the week ending August 5th compared to the previous year. This was a higher decline than the 25.9% year-on-year fall recorded in the week ending June 17th. In June, Mulvaney posted another video to Instagram. In June, Mulvaney posted another video to Instagram saying Dylan was afraid to leave Dylan's house since the backlash over the Bud Light collaboration. Dylan accused the company of failing to reach out to Dylan. What's incredible about this is Dylan was across the country at the Tony Awards taking pictures with Tony the Tiger from Kellogg's wearing a fancy schmancy expensive dress also went to Peru on a vacation Dylan has been at other events since then it's always scary to have agoraphobia and be afraid to leave your house but at the same time Dylan has left Dylan's house quite a few times since this statement has been made. Dylan is also complaining that people at Bud Light didn't contact Dylan to see hey are you okay? Is everything going all right? Well, in the meantime, people were laid off, fired, reassigned. They've got layoffs of 2% of their 19,000 employees, and that's only just so far in the marketing and administrative staff. 
There really was nobody left after all the layoffs to go and start calling Dylan Mulvaney and asking how Dylan was feeling. In addition to that, they laid off 645 really great manufacturing jobs at two independent glass plants because the glass bottle companies were well aware their business with Bud Light was basically dead and they weren't going to be getting it back anytime soon. So they had to go to the incredible expense of closing those glass plants. Beyond that, distributors who distribute Anheuser-Busch products, including Bud Light, have been laying people off and cutting back on their pay because they can't sell the product the way they used to sell the product. Mulvaney said, quote, I took a brand deal with a company I loved and I posted a sponsored video to my page and it must have been a slow news week because the way that this ad got blown up, you would have thought I was on a billboard or on a TV commercial or something major. But no, it was just an Instagram video. Referencing the boycott campaign, Mulvaney added, I was waiting for the brand to reach out to me, but they never did. And for months now, I've been scared to leave my house. Even though, as we said, Mulvaney left the house several times going across country. But I don't know. I don't know what's in Mulvaney's head. For a company to hire a trans person and then not publicly stand by them is worse, in Mulvaney's opinion, than not hiring a trans person at all. I would agree with that. They probably should have not hired Mulvaney in the first place because it's cost them at least $20 billion to date in lost stock value. In addition to the 30% nationwide, they've lost in sales volume for Bud Light alone, but they've lost percentages of sales volume for all of the Anheuser-Busch brands because people are aware and they're sharing information about which brands are related to Anheuser-Busch so they don't mistakenly buy a product from a company they don't want to support. At the time, an Anheuser-Busch spokesperson told Newsweek, quote, as we've said, we remain committed to the programs and partnerships we forged over the decades with organizations across a number of communities, including those in the LGBT community. The privacy and safety of all our employees and our partners is always our top priorities. As we move forward, we will focus on what we do best brewing great beer for everyone and earning our place in moments that matter to our consumers, the spokesperson added. So six months on, Anheuser-Busch has had 350 or so layoffs of their own employees, but they haven't laid off people yet who actually make the beer because their volume is down without any kind of dispute, at least by 30% it's going to mean they need to lay off a lot more of those 19,000 employees. Right now, the Teamsters are going after Anheuser-Busch. That is going to be something that's interesting because as soon as they start trying to go on strike, the layoffs are probably going to be aggressively triggered then. I'm expecting to hear about layoffs either this week, next week, very soon, because it just doesn't matter if you want to be politically correct or not. Once you've lost 30% of the volume, for this kind of manufacturing product, there's no way to not lay off more of that 19,000 employee base. It just works that way. In addition to that, their stock has rebounded a little bit from the lowest point where they were down over $27 billion, but it's still down over $19 billion. It looks like it's down about $20 billion and it's still not bouncing back. That is a severe amount of money to lose. And there are still people promoting the company. There are analysts saying, hey, we think this company is going to bounce back. Maybe it does bounce back. The brand Bud Light is not bouncing back. The people that have decided they do not want this beer anymore are not going to go buy Bud Light and they're not going to buy Budweiser. At the very least, you can count on that. In addition to all this, the shelf space resets have begun. So now we're in the fall. Anson Fredericks, former president for distribution of Anheuser-Busch, predicted this back in May. He said, hey, look, if Anheuser-Busch does not solve this problem brought on by the Dylan Mulvaney controversy, they are going to permanently lose shelf space when the sales don't bounce back. Even with giving away the beer for free, even with giving away the beer at a discount, even with spending three times the money they plan to spend on marketing and promotions, they have not been able to recover their sales. They were killed around the July 4th holiday. They were killed around Labor Day. And now the shelf space resets start to happen. Their competitors are now reporting that at least 20 major retailers have let the competitors know, we are going to be buying more of your beer Please be prepared to deliver it. And that is directly at the expense of Anheuser-Busch, 
Budweiser, Bud Light, and other products they sell because when the sales aren't there, stores will not stock the beer the same way they used to stock them. They will only stock the things that actually sell. That's how the stores make money. They only make money when product is actually sold. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.